Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Susram. Today we're taking a look at the Saturn Carrier Mark 1, which is the carrier for space that I've been working on, which I just realized up till now I've been calling Saturn Carrier just because it's supposed to carry a Saturn V rocket, but then I realized actually that's a good enough name. And I know I asked you to come up with the name, but yeah, uh, well, unless someone comes up with a better name, it's the Saturn Carrier. I might make another thing that's different and better or something that I will call the Saturn or <laughs> call a different name if someone suggests it. But anyhow, on the inside I've added some RCS Fuel RTG's batteries, uh, docking clamps, the small ones along the bay, some lighting along the bay, and then one big one at the front, as you just saw for a brief moment as I was going through. And as you can see right now, this is empty. That's because I just, oh yeah, and some solar panels right up front. As you can see, this is empty, and I just remembered, I want to make these solar panels toggle on Action Group 1, because it would make sense with the Saturn V rocket that I have that has some solar panels that toggle on 1, which I know isn't very realistic, but shh, don't tell anyone. Anyhow, I now consider the design complete, as... All I needed to do was make a few more tweaks, add some solar panels here and there, and as I was saying in previous videos, I was pretty sure that it could get into space if it was just flown better. And I have actually proven that before even going to what I'm going to do now. As for what I'm going to do now, first of all, I installed curb inside, so that's why there's hangars there and buildings and stuff over there, including... Is my wreckage inside a building now? Nah, I think that stuff's much farther than the actual building that's closer, but in any case, I've installed some more mods. Well, primarily curb inside. I think there was one other thing I installed. Oh yes, I installed another parts pack, uh, Retro Future something or other. And I can actually... Is it two? Nope, that's the wrong one. Oops, disabled all the engines. Yeah, that's totally what I wanted to do. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little more fuel efficient as I go up. Well you know, supposedly fuel efficient. I don't know. Then again, I do want to get up there fast, so let me turn off all the engines because I accidentally hit the wrong button because I'm not paying too close attention like I should be. I'm also going to now move the windows around because I realized that the window, the place I had the window in was a place that I didn't like the window being in because of how I'm doing things now. I'm, I'm, I've been experimenting with recording in different ways. The primary way I've been recording differently is I've been using open broadcaster software for all my recording as well as for live streaming which I still haven't done any live streams recently. I did a few test ones and was like oh I can live stream now but I haven't done anything past those tests and I really should because you know I can now. But in any case I'm now using the same software that I was using to stream to also record because it's been working great at recording and especially with its built-in noise filter that automatically takes out the background noise so all I have to do is compress level and normalize the audio before finishing my edit. It's it's much easier to edit the audio this way which which is nice. I just realized my landing gear are still uh, uh, down. Yeah that's that's not exactly the best way to go about things but it's alright. This thing has plenty of Delta V. It, can go pretty fast, pretty far. I'm actually going to throttle down the engines because I tested this thing's flight using a full payload, and obviously with a low, uh, with a with a heavier payload, the thrust doesn't push us as fast as quickly because the thrust has to push all the rest of that payload. So I'm trying to kind of I'm I'm backing off on the thrust a bit because I want us to kind of follow a similar flight path to what I had before, even though that's just not going to be possible at this point, as evidenced by how fly we're f how fly, how fast we're flying already. But basically what I did was I did full throttle at a 45 degree angle until I got to about 20, about 25,000 meters, 25,000 meters. I was about to say 25,000 kilometers, but that would have been wrong. Anyhow, I got to about that high and then I kept at full throttle after pitching down to the horizon and then I kept it at the horizon until I ran out of intake air and then just burned to space from there. Of course, this one, this one being with nothing on board, it's actually going up much quicker than the other one did and I'm actually not going to be able to get to the orbital speed that I want to, it looks like, before I run out. Then again, maybe, I don't know. 
we'll see in a moment as I'll lose out on my ability to thrust in just a moment. As you can see, my intake air is dropping rapidly. And as soon as it switches, we close the intakes and cut the engines because we want to save that. We want to save that thrust for finishing our orbit. So as you can see, our apoapsis has actually gotten to one, 169 kilometers up. Of course, it's going to drop a little bit because we are still in the atmosphere. It's already down to 168 and it's going to drop to 166, I'm guessing, before we actually get out of the atmosphere. Here's another one of these, the Work in Progress 12 one. This one has a Saturn V rocket on it and it is in a 99 by 100 kilometer orbit. So, as you can see by the fact that that is sitting there in orbit, we can in fact get into orbit with a Saturn V rocket inside. Of course, like I said before, this one is empty. This one is just to demonstrate to you that we can indeed get into orbit, that I'm not just making it up, that I didn't just edit it in there. Although I suppose to truly demonstrate that, I would have had to launch another Saturn V rocket into orbit. But I really didn't feel like doing that because I feel like if I was going to do that, I need to launch one in better condition than the one that's already up there. Because the one that's already up there, I really just put it kind of in the cargo hold in a placeholder sort of way. It's not really attached in there the way I'd actually want it to be attached in there because I didn't really think I'd be launching it into all the way into orbit like that. Uh, I was wrong. Anyhow, I'm going to finish getting us into a stable orbit. I'm not actually going to... I'm not going to get us into a circular orbit, just a stable orbit. And the idea there really is just that I want us to be in orbit so that... Let's see, and T... Ooh, 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 overshot just a little bit. But I want it to get into a stable orbit so that I can switch over to the other one without having to worry about this one. As you can see, we have we have an insanely good thrust to weight ratio when we're in space because this thing does have amazing engines on board. In fact, also that reminds me, let's go ahead and open the cargo bay doors and let's activate all the lights so we can see what that looks like. In fact, let's close those again so we can see what it looks like with just the lights on inside. Ah, yes, there you go. It's a very nice muted lighting. I think I actually did the spacing quite well. This is untested. This is the first time I've actually gotten to see what the lighting looks like since I changed it. But as you can see, the lighting is basically I modified the values on these to be 0.75 instead of 1 so there wouldn't be that harsh glare that there otherwise would be. And as you can see, it's it's quite nice. And um, of course, these ones turned on as well. And those ones are at 1. Those are our landing lights, of course, which I found out after editing that they um, they got undone when I was trying to put these little canards on the front. They somehow got undone, which was kind of annoying. I had to place them back. But yes, there's our lights. I'm opening the bay again because what I really wanted to do was not turn on the lights, but deploy these solar panels to just be like, show you where the solar panels deploy. So you can see they deploy there. They are shielded on this side by the cockpit, so they're not very effective on this side, but from the top, from the top down, they'll be fairly effective. You know, actually, that's pretty darn good. And then, obviously, from kind of these angles back behind it, they'll be more effective. So, yes, that is the design. As you can see, with it empty, we came into space with a lot of fuel left and a lot of oxidizer, actually. And that's because, well, we didn't have a payload. Let's switch to the other craft now. And as you can see, apoapsis of 108428438588, whatever, blah, 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 you know, there's a little bit of wonkiness in the predictions, whatever. We are in orbit, and when I open the bay, you will see we have a complete Saturn V rocket on board. There's two things I want to do. I want to test re-entry and landing with this, and I want to actually fly it off into space. This particular one is attached by, like I said, a temporary version of what I'd actually like to attach. See, it's just like an ugly little strut and this piece and this weird decoupler holding onto the capsule. It doesn't actually have a parachute either. I just remembered that. There's no parachute in here. And that's because I had to reassemble this from sub-assemblies. I had to put the capsule down. There's no communication antenna either because that was surface attached to the capsule. And I had to make sub-assemblies of the rocket and of the escape tower section and put those back together here. So with this version, I guess we will just test the landing. That's next time, however. For now, thanks for watching. As always, see you in space, and there will be a download link in the description to the Mark 1 Saturn carrier. Note that this was made in version 1.0 of the Mark 4 space plane system mod, and version 1.1.1 has been released, and in that version, 
I believe the intakes and or engines are less powerful. I think the engines are the same amount of power, but the intakes don't take they don't take you as high. They don't have as much air as high as these do. I think these weren't supposed to be this high. I think I think the uh, mod author realized they were more overpowered than he meant them to be. So keep that in mind when you're downloading this that it may not actually work that well for you unless you're using version 1. I will hopefully update it later to be working in 1.1.1.1. Oh shit, you gotta be kidding me. Fucking mic stand. At least that happened before I started. Let me try, let me try putting it more like, just like laying down. Let's try this. No, that's... Alright. Sitting closer, bringing the mic closer to my face. I just bumped my fucking computer, I think. 